Um, first, first action, can everybody please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Item two, reading of the mission statement. Megan, please. Our mission, Macomb County Community Mental Health, guided by the values, strengths, and informed choices of the people we serve, provides quality services which promote recovery, community participation, self-sufficiency, and independence. Thank you, Megan. Thank you. Item number three, adoption of the agenda. So moved. Support. Motion by Megan, support by Lori. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, item number four, hearing of the public. Is there anybody in the public that wishes to address this board? Once, twice? There will be another hearing of the public at the end of the meeting. Item number 5A, request to approve residential lease A. This has been approved by legal. I'll take a motion. Support. Four. Motion by Mark, support by Wayne. And TJ, I think this is you. Anybody have questions for TJ? Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Item 5B, request to approve furniture purchase for 10 used cubicles for the North program, not to exceed 15,000. I'll take a motion. Support. Motion by Donna, support by Lori. TJ? Uh, we um, are looking at used furniture. We're finding um, some pretty good deals, as you know, plethora and there's a plentiful out there so we're looking at used and we want to be able to pull the trigger quickly if something uh, reasonable and in, in great condition comes up and I'm just seeking pre-approval should that happen I'll be able to purchase quickly that's all this is okay any questions for TJ all in favor aye, aye. any opposed okay thanks TJ Item 5C, request to approve the offering contracts to two women's specialty substance use treatment providers. So move. Support. Motion by Wayne, support by Megan. Helen? Megan Nicole. Oh, sweet. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Um, so we had previously contracted with two different providers for women's specialty services. And last year, one of those providers discontinued that service. So we got board approval to do an RFP so that we could increase our capacity and ensure that we had client choice for providers. So we had two proposals submitted. They were reviewed by our review committee. Uh, we had Flint Odyssey House and Our Hope. And both of them met the um, criteria that we needed to contract. So we wanted to issue contracts with both of those providers. And I'm sorry, what was the second one? Our Hope. Oh, okay. Any questions? All in favor? Those are the only two, yeah. And we do have other providers that are kind of far away. Sometimes we have clients that actually choose to go to a more distant location to kind of get away mm -hmm. from maybe family, friends, or other folks, so it's an option. <laughs> Any other questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Item 5D, request to approve offering contracts to five outpatient substance use treatment providers. I'll take a motion. So moved. Support. Motion by Megan, support by Lori. Is this you too, Nicole? This is, yes. Um, so over the past couple of years, we've had a reduction of capacity with some of our outpatient treatment providers. Some of them have closed locations. A lot of them have seen a reduction in staff. So we've had more wait times getting into treatment for some of our clients. So we had approval to do an RFP for outpatient services so that we could increase the capacity and increase client choice again. So with that one, we had six um, proposals that we received that were reviewed by our committee. Five of them met the requirements. There was one provider that 
Um, they haven't provided the service yet. They were not accredited for that service, and they didn't have a location in Macomb County, which we really look for for outpatient because you have to be able to get there on a regular basis. So we're recommending the five that did meet those uh, minimum contracting requirements be offered contracts. Okay, thank you. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, item 5E, request approval to release a, an <coughs> RFP for behavioral health treatment applied behavior analysis. I'll take a motion. Motion by Phil, support by Mark. Is this Helen or Nicole? Who's doing this one? Me. Okay. I'll do this one. <laughs> So um, in our system, we currently have contracts for uh, this service. However, uh, there's definitely a need for more. And so to have more choice and more availability and a quicker timely response, uh, we'd like to issue the RFP just to kind of expand the network that we currently have. Be meeting the need that way. Any questions? Okay, I'll go ahead, Donna. I think that'll depend on what comes in because if somebody can only offer like one or two staff to do this work, we'll need more. So, but if somebody says, oh, you know, I've got a staff of 10 that can meet this need, we could take on a caseload of X, you know, uh, we'll kind of look at it that way. So we don't really have a need to limit how many we bring on. Uh, there's really no need to. It's um, sometimes the more choice, the more timely access you have. But this is a service that many times it's difficult to find somebody as quick as we want them. <coughs> there are quite a few waiting at this point. Yeah, they're receiving services, but this particular piece is, would be handy. And we're finding more and more as we have um, people with more challenges. If we could offer this, it would be more helpful when we try to do residential placements. Uh, they could offer more support to that state that um, home as well. So we just think this would be a very positive improvement to the system. Okay, thanks Helen. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, item 5F, request approval to release an RFP for behavioral management services. I'll take a motion. Mm -hmm. Support. Motion by Donna, support by Lori. Helen? Again, same kind of uh, approach here. We really just want to be able to expand, have quicker access, more choices, more options. Uh, I think kind of like as Nicole mentioned, like a lot of our programs, they're just really struggling um, with staff shortages and things. So they've done their best to bring on, but if we have a few more options, a few more choices, that'll just give our network more support. Okay, thank you. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Item 5G, request to approve grant funded purchases for integrated care, IHC fair on August 24th, 2024, supplies not to exceed 24,000. I'll take a motion. So moved. Support. Motion by Antoinette, support by Wayne. Agnes, is this one you? Good evening. So this is basically a funding through our integrated health care grant, um, and it is largely going to cover materials for our um, health and wellness fair, which we had last year. Our, that was our first annual. A lot of you know about it, went to the fair. We are doing our second annual in August this year. Um, so we will be sending out some emails for volunteers and obviously um, flyers for marketing. So we need funding to cover all of those booklets we've had and just a lot, a lot of the materials that we used for the fair. And some miscellaneous items that um, we want to use that are part of integrated care like hygiene kits, sunscreen sanitizers um, for people that we want to, um, you know, that are being serviced who are homeless and um, some of our other agencies who have expressed need for these types of products for the individuals we serve. Okay, very good. Any questions? 
All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Item number six, receive and file, <coughs> MCCMH Member Satisfaction Survey 2023. That was my question. <laughs> <laughs> support. Okay, who went, did Phil make the motion? Yeah. Phil made the motion, support by Megan, thank you. Okay, Tema, this is you. Yes, sir. Good evening. Hi. So, oh, you have it in your packages. And uh, I usually love my presentation, but it's not working today, so I'm Aww. sorry about that. But um, I'm going to go high level on the methodology, then I'll go in more details with the challenges that we are facing and also the next steps that we are taking. So first of all, this survey was administered to adults, children, their guardians, and also their caregivers. The survey period was from September 1st through November 7th. And we actually had to extend the time because it was normally supposed to be for a month, but the participation rate was so low, so we had to extend it, and we still didn't get to our target. But we did much better than last the previous year. Um, so the way we administered the survey, we had hard copies on every location. We had electronic administration, which um, consisted of the QR code that you could scan from your phone. We had face-to-face, -face, so the staff were available to assist those who needed assistance. This survey was analyzed through SurveyMonkey, and um, the tool that was used was the National Standardized Tool for Adults and for Youths, which is approved by the state of Michigan. The participation rate, I have to say, was very low. So we had um, 19 contracted providers and then 10 of our direct programs participated in this, and uh, the breakdown is on there. We only had 393 for adults, 137 for children. In total, we have 530, so the participation rate was 4.7%. The next slide you'll see is the outcome for adult population, and um, overall, the general satisfaction was 98.8%, which is um, not terribly bad compared to the other PHPs. So I'm not going to really belabor this piece, but these areas that are very concerning is the functioning. So the, the survey was broken down into all of this section. But if you look at the results, we have done very poorly in that section. And also access to care is another big challenge that we are facing in our region. And for the youths, it's um, about the same, the outcome and functioning were the two areas as well that we perform very poorly. Also looking at this compared to 2022 survey results, we have not done very well. Actually, we have done poorer than 2022. And uh, we also still have some challenges that are going on, but we are working through some other things to try to fix some of the issues that we identified. So I'm going to move on to the, some of the challenges that we faced. The first one is the low participation rate. We also realized that the contract providers were not fully engaged in the pro process. So we have actually reminded them that this is their obligation it's part of the core PIP and it's also part of their contractual uh, obligation. We have um, high staff turnover. So there's always downtime and training for new staff, which would uh, give a gap for, for our members. And also members don't like when they have to see new providers all the time. So that also would cause dissatisfaction. Members are consistently adjusting to new staff members, just like I mentioned. Then uh, appointment availability, that's a big one. We don't have enough access. Even when we collect the data for um, access data, we send it back to the providers and say, can you tell us why you were out of compliance? They just say they don't have appointments available. So there's really not much we can do except for the other initiatives of trying to get new providers on board. Um, lack of member follow-up and engagement. 
So when the providers are not fully engaged with these individuals, they, they are prone to missing their appointments. And when they miss appointments, the outcome is not going to be what is expected. After COVID effect has also continued to, to strain our system because we are seeing more and more acute cases which are harder to treat and also increase in depression, anxiety and other needs in our community. Some of the initiatives that we have put in place to try and address some of this, um, our directs and some of our providers, our contracted providers have recently open slots for walk-in to allow immediate access. So if someone calls in and they need to see someone, they can be directed to one of our locations and say, go there right now, you can be taken as a walk-in. So that's one of the things we're trying to do. And then the quality department has started to share data with our providers to better understand their challenges. So when we look at data that they were out of compliance for certain areas of KPI, we are sending it to them and say, can you review your data and let us know why you were out of compliance? Is it something that we can assist with or is it something that you can adjust your operations to be able to make compliance? So that has been going on. That just started um, maybe about a month and a half ago and it's been going fairly okay. Uh, Plan of service training is another piece that our tra training department is doing. They are beginning to provide targeted trainings on plans of service and integrated care plans because we are finding out also some of our members are saying they were not fully engaged, they, were, they did not fully participate in their training plan. So we are making sure that our staff fully understand how to get them engaged. The quality department has also began the work to reinstate the provider audit process. Because of COVID and everything, staff turnover, the audit process was um, took a break for a little bit, but we are beginning to go back into that uh, practice. And this is also going to allow us to proactively find some of the challenges or some of the deficiencies and try to resolve them before it becomes an actual problem. Um, there's also the inter implementation of the assertive behavioral treatment pilot program. This program allows us to be able to identify challenging cases that are in the hospital and pair them with a behavioral specialist so they can be able to work with them from the hospital and also provide support to any provider who accepts to take them who, are, who, who would also support them while they're in their homes to get them stable. So with all of this, the next step is to continue to review quality audit results and also implement necessary interventions to, to improve care. We're also seeking feedback from stakeholders so that we can incorporate into our ongoing interventions. So if anybody has some brilliant ideas as to what we can do, we are more than welcome to receive those ideas. Um, we are going to continue to educate and support our members and encourage them to complete these surveys because we kind of feel like the, the results was kind of skewed because we didn't have a good um, representation of the results. And also we are encouraging and empowering our providers to be more intentional about engaging these individuals when they are seeking care so that way they can be happy to come back Okay. Any questions? Go ahead, Donna. Let me see if I can get this to turn on. Is it on? Yeah. Um, I was wondering, you talked about the high staff turnover rate. Um, I'm assuming that's not in the uh, directs, but do we know, is that therapists and case managers? Um, and do we know why there's such a high turnover rate? Do we know where people are going? Have we tracked that at all? Do we know why there's such a high turnover rate? That's a million dollar question. So yeah. if it's helpful, <laughs> I can answer some of it. If okay, you know. yeah. I'm just wondering where are people going? For and sure. have we, because we talked about tracking it with direct care workers. So have we done any tracking on that at all? 
we track it internally, right? But we outside of a high level at the provider level, outside of them per, per, uh, reporting like a turnover rate, we don't necessarily track the details, right? That would be up to them. But if you utilize our organization as a sample, we do have higher turnover rates in positions like case managers. In com we do have turnover on therapists, but not as many. There was a period of time right after COVID hit about a year in where we had therapists that were leaving for like the better help type of organizations, like 100% online. But what's interesting is we now see a wave kind of coming back from those types of opportunities. Um, the case managers, it's a hard job with a lot of expectations, a ton of them. So uh, Tema didn't go into great detail, but one of the things that we need to do is to provide, to provide additional support is training those individuals, celebrating those individuals and making them recognize that they can't be the solution for all things. Because I do think that we treat them like they need to be the solution for all things. So I think it's the case managers are such a key component that we need to put some additional emphasis on. But if you looked at our organization turnover rate, it actually hasn't gotten worse as a whole. It's actually gotten stayed about the same or depending on the position, it gotten a little bit better, a little bit worse. So our, we are actually in comparison, not in a bad place in the aggregate, just to be clear. I, I just think it's so important. Agreed. Agreed. If it's helpful when you ask our providers, even the DCWs, what they say is it's like a recycling wheel. So, for example, I'm leaving because you're going to pay 25 more cents, and then I'm going to leave because you're going to do this. You have this more days off. It's like we have this group of people that everybody is just constantly recycling, and I don't think that's true just with the DCWs. We have that same scenario. If you go to the case managers, you'll see the same names just at different organizations over time. It's basically almost like the same thing our providers. We need a bigger pool because the pool just keeps on recycling. Yeah, it's concerning to me. Agreed. Um, I, I think I expressed this last evening too. As a therapist, it really concerns me that we have to let patients that come to us leave anybody out of the class and possibly suicide. It really concerns me. It's, we need to get the more money. I appreciate, I really appreciate the support. Anything we can do, any support? And I'll do my interview, and I'll just Thank you. Thanks, Donna. No, go ahead. <laughs> I raised my hand, I guess I was getting ready, but go ahead. <laughs> I think we can explore it out of the gate. Tr our, the traditional funds we have, no, that would not be right. allowed. Could we explore some alternative funds that might be a little bit less restrictive? I think we can look into I mean, it. I, it's just a thought, uh, it's just mm -hmm. something that came into my mind. So from my past experience as well, I know it's always been discouraged because I cannot pay you to tell me how I'm doing. So if I'm paying you, of course, you're going to tell me I'm doing well. So I don't know, but if it's different and if it's approved, then no objections.
I didn't know if there was just something in off or somehow <laughs> he made it appear like we can explore it. Thanks, Lori. Megan? Um, so, oh, it went out of my, okay, no. Uh, for our providers, I'm so sorry. For our providers, um, is there a way to, I mean, I, I know you can't force another organization to do anything, you know, but from like an HR perspective to kind of get at what you're getting at, is there a way, can we formulate, which we, the answer may be that we probably already have, some sort of exit interview that like, in order to be our provider, we give you this exit interview that we would like, we're going to do a study over the next year, you know, and just randomly gather at all different levels of the organization. Anytime someone leaves voluntarily, they fill out this three question, you know, we'll make it meaningful, but I wonder if we crafted it and said, hey, provider, we want to make it this better for you. You know, it's not like a financial incentive or something, but we really want to get to the bottom of this, not a rush job. Like we want to take our time to do it and really measure it over a certain period of time. I just wonder, a good old fashioned exit interview. You wouldn't do it if people, you know, were terminated involuntarily or anything like that, because then they're going to be skewed too. But I just wonder if maybe we could control the narrative with that. Or do we? Is the answer that we do? I'm sorry. Let's not do it to that detail, right? Like sure. her person leaving. I think anything is worth Possible. Right, yeah. right. Um, our providers are very good and they sure. partner with us. So would they listen? Sure. Absolutely, they mm -hmm. would. But I also think they're very overwhelmed right now. I bet. So we'd almost have to bring to their, like, how, why how would this we be beneficial to mm -hmm. them, if that makes sure. sense? So we, and if right or wrong, the state bombards us with sure. data and reports, like, we have whole people that that's their whole jobs. Mm -hmm. Remember, to get that, we have to go to our providers. So we just have to sometimes balance the data requests that we're infiltrating them with and getting their partnership. So then just to be clear, Megan, I think it's worth exploring. Mm -hmm. That would just be my disclaimer, not at the loss of frustrating them. Yeah. 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 Right. And Tema Works has a, a quality provider meeting. Would you agree? That would be their. I know it's easier yeah. to say than do mm -hmm. too. Like I know that that's a whole lot. Yeah. Because one of the things we are going to be doing in the next month and a half is a provider satisfaction survey. So we want to hear from the providers as well how we can improve to make their lives better. So hopefully that will be coming back here once we get the results. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Item number seven, resolutions. We don't have any resolutions. Oh, oh, we got a vote. Thanks, guys. Okay. <laughs> All in favor of receiving and, and receiving and filing the member satisfaction survey? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? <laughs> Thanks, guys. Aye. Okay. Item number seven, resolutions. We don't have any resolutions. Item number eight, other possible agenda items. 8A, we have a customer service presentation from Chanel Moore. Good evening. Hi, I am Chanel Moore, the Customer Service Administrator at Macomb County Community Mental Health. In your package, you should have a copy of the PowerPoint presentation that I'm going to discuss with you all today. So I'm going to just share some updates regarding the Customer Service Department, and this presentation will provide who our team is, what we do, how we put people first, and I'll also talk a little bit about our data, the metrics, um, and how you could contact customer service. So in your packet, I believe the third slide you would see is um, our team. We currently have a team of 10 agents, one of which is a team lead, and then we have myself, the customer service administrator. So those are the happy faces of our team. So I'm going to go into the function areas of what we do in the next few slides. I'm going to give an overview of all those areas and how we incorporate the core values of MCCMH, which are collaborative, accountable, and respectful, as we work to put people first. So 
So digging a little bit deeper into that, the customer service department is the telephonic front door of CMH. We answer the phone line, the 1-855-99-MCCMH or 711-TTY. All the calls that come into our department are community members who are either seeking services, they may have questions, and our team is trained to welcome them, orient them, orient them to the services that we provide and answer their questions. So we have agents available Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. And after hours, there is a phone tree that the individual would hear. They can select an option to always reach someone. They can reach the crisis center, which operates 24-7, 365 if there is a mental health emergency. Our team also triages calls. We work to gather their information, demographics, insurance information. We put all of that into the electronic medical record. So we update, it, update that and connect them to the department in which best suits their needs for whatever requests they have, whatever services they're seeking. We seek to connect them with the appropriate department in a timely fashion. Our team is very collaborative. We work with pretty much everybody in the organization, every department in the organization, and some external uh, entities as well, including hospitals, um, some insurance companies, whatever the person served needs, we work to assist them. Uh, we classify grievances and appeals when individuals call with those needs as well by connecting them with the due process coordinator of Macomb County CMH. We also work to make sure we are equitable and inclusive to all and accessible for all. So some of the things we've done to um, do some work in this area are having our member handbooks printed in multiple languages, uh, the top languages of the community that we serve, which are English, Spanish, Arabic, and Bengali, and all of those can be found on our agency's hand our website. Um, we also have telephonic interpretation that is available as needed. So if a caller calls, calls in and there's a language barrier, we can get an interpreter on the line to assist during that call. Um, and we also work internally in our department to make sure our team has ongoing professional development opportunities. One of the areas that we have began to touch on recently is gender inclusive language because again, we want to be inclusive and respectful of all. The next slide you'll see talks about the customer service phone metrics and the key performance indicators. So in our team, we have some metrics that we work to make sure we're meeting. We wanna set the tone for excellence. And so in that, we have a service level uh, benchmark that we work. We try to answer 90% of the calls which within 30 seconds, which we have been able to do pretty successfully um, over the past couple of years. We have an average speed to answer, which again is answering those calls within 30 seconds. Not always, but we do do it over 80% of the time pretty consistently. Uh, we have an average wait time that no caller should be left on hold more than two minutes. Our abandonment rate goal is less than 5%. So if a caller calls and we're not re readily able to get to that call right away, we don't want them to hang up, if at all possible, because that kind of points to staff availability. So we try to keep our abandonment rate under 5%, and we have definitely been able to do that. And then we also measure requeues. Requeue is a measure of agent availability. So a, a requeue is if a call comes in and a staff misses it, it requeues or goes to the next agent in the queue. Our goal is to keep requeues under 10 per month per agent. And we have, um, our agents have been able to do that pretty successfully. So over the past two years, uh, since November 2021, we've met all of the external benchmarks that have been set for us um, by our external stakeholders. And this uh, data that I just covered is reported to quality and other external entities such as uh, the ICOs that we report to. Um, during fiscal year 2023, the customer service team handled about 72,000 calls. On average, we take about 250 a day on average, 250. So yes, a very high, call, high volume call center. And so the future of customer service. We, again, are striving to make sure we're delivering customer service excellence to every caller, every time. Um, over the next year and moving forward, we will continue to work on building a robust uh, toolbox of resources for our team, continue to support the professional development of the staff, continue to empower staff to strive for excellence during every encounter, and continuing to support the workplace culture of diversity, equity, and inclusion. 
that is the end of my presentation. Are there any questions? Thank you very much. Phil? Okay. Yes, Phil. Thank you, Madam Chair. Chanel, first off, I want to thank you and your team for all that you do day in and day out um, for the people that we serve. Your, your work in, is fantastic. And Ryan's not here to be excited about this. So I'm going to be excited <laughs> for him because this is his metric. This is his uh, statistics. He loves this stuff. Whenever we get these on an annual basis or quarterly basis on how well you know the calls are getting answered, how the drop-offs are decreasing. I mean, your metrics have improved significantly over the last few years. So thank you to you and your team for that and for what everybody else is doing at CMH to improve that so that our folks aren't getting left in the dark or hung up on or, or anything like that. So thank you. Absolutely. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. I would never have guessed 72,000 calls. Yes. That's a lot. Yes, it is a lot. We have an amazing team that answers those calls. It sounds like so, it. So yes. I have to echo what Phil said. So yes, thank you very much. Thank you. And Madam Chair, I don't have a I don't have a question, but I just want to reiterate that Chanel is amazing at this. Thank she's you. a great leader. She's very humble, um, but she leads well, and she's one of those people that leads that you don't know that she's leading. Right, so I just want to make sure that she hears how amazing she is, and okay. to echo what Phil was saying, these numbers really have dramatically changed under her leadership. She has excellent team members, but she's given them the, the proper guidance, and she's very good at tracking data to demonstrate that what we're doing well at and what we're not doing well. At. So I just want to make sure everybody hears and express my deepest appreciation. Thank you. Mm -hmm. We also need to do a podcast. We have like the best. <laughs> 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 Thank you. <laughs> All right. Have a good evening. Thank you. I know. She's a very soothing voice. Yeah, she <laughs> she's got a soothing that. personality. Just everything is. <laughs> okay. Item 8B, interim CEO update. So I will be quick. Um, you will, of course, get the board like a written report, and then I'll give a little bit more detailed updates the next meeting. But at a high level... Finance, drawing your attention, and this will be much d dived in deeper at the next meeting. There are concerns still with workday. So remember the county changed to workday, and that does create reporting problems. But now we're at a place where it's going to get um, very concerning. So it's not just about the payroll. It's about the ability to reconcile and finalize, not just payroll, all of our financial records. If we're not able to do that, that means we're not able to meet auditing requirements. It also means we're not able to meet, submit adequate and reconciled reports to the state of Michigan. So uh, Ken at the next meeting will give you much more detail, but we do want to point out there to the best of our ability um, and predictability, we are going to be uh, out of compliance and it's going to cause, cause concerns um, with the state of Michigan at a time that we probably should not be drawing a concerns to our financial tracking. So again, he's going to give specifics. I just want to make sure you hear where we're at um, moving forward. Um, I know we're not, there will be a new agenda item. I want to draw your attention to it. If you remember, excitingly, we were awarded the AOT grant. It's lost in eGram's land somewhere. <laughs> They're trying to, as at the eGrams folks, are trying to find it to get it back to us. So because of that, it starts May 1st. I'm drawing your attention to that because it will be on the next, as long as they find it, it, it will be on the next board meeting as a new agenda item, but it's a really standardized uh, agreement, and it's just, again, as a reminder for 98000 um, Other things is I want to congratulate, just in case you missed it, um, all the people, Lori, Donna, Mark, and... Um, Phil are famous. They were in the Macomb Daily, so drawing your attention to the news article if you didn't see it. Um, I know Phil wasn't a fan, but I'm sure everybody <laughs> else was. <laughs> no, it was a great picture. <laughs> <laughs> so if you missed it, I just we'll put that in the report, but I just wanted to make sure you saw that. Uh, secondly, um, we do have, I have myself and Janet Mara have an interview next week with MEA TV. We also have several segments. I think I mentioned it with CBS News. Now that we have some of our winners, um, we're trying to start scheduling those because she will be doing some interviews with the winners and get those out. We're also Thanks. trying to currently partner with um, Oakland and Wayne. They have not committed, but uh, CBS News has committed to doing a segment during one of their live news segments, like at 4 or noon or both, about Medicaid redetermination. So remember, at, just to give you a reminder, we are actually in a good financial situation, but that still doesn't mean that everybody who should be out, who 
should re-enroll the Medicaid did. So the message of that would be to hopefully educate the public on this is still important. You have until June and just making sure it's a shared in a simple plain language. So we're trying to get Wayne and Oakland to participate so then it's not just Macomb kind of screaming about how important this is. Mm -hmm. um, but we haven't got their buying quite yet. Other things is just to give you a quick update on safety since that was a hotter topic. Um, the north location, everything has been installed like we said before. Um, we, are, we do have one of the security companies going in and just doing a preliminary tour. We're still trying to get pricing. So we have pricing for one, we're trying to get pricing from another. Kind of based on that, we'll bring it back around essentially to you. I don't know exactly what that will look like until we get a little bit more information, but just so you have an update. Um, other things is regarding the team member engagement. I know a few of you participated in the discussions with last, the most recent one was with Crossroads. We have a couple other ones coming out. I just wanna express my appreciation. I think it's great if you can attend those when you can. I think it's a good perspective for them, the staff to see that you're interested and kind of what they do, so. Uh, and then just to give you this Friday, myself and a couple people, Helen, um, are going and Jeff are going to DWIN or Detroit Wayne is opening their CSU, which is exciting for them, but we just wish we were also there. So, I'm sorry, oh, you have a good question. Uh, crisis stabilization unit. So they are having their ribbon cutting. We are gonna get a tour. We're, we're excited to see like a comparison essentially, and that is this Friday. Um, and I think that is all I have, unless anybody has any specific questions. Any questions for Tracy? Okay, thank you, Tracy. Mm -hmm. Okay, just a couple of reminders. We have a recipient rights advisory committee meeting Thursday, April 18th at 8 a.m. at the CMH admin building. And then our full board meeting will be Wednesday, April 24th at 6 p.m. right here. Item number nine is provider comments. Phil, I'm gonna turn it over to you. Thank you, Madam Chair. So, board members, you're gonna notice I added a new kind of permanent agenda item for program and budget and full board. Uh, we regularly have providers that come in and give us updates and things like that. And I want us to be able to have a conversation or be able to ask questions or have, have a, some of a communication with them while they're up here, as opposed to in public comment, which is more for us to listen to the public. I didn't want that to get confusing to anybody here from the public, and I wanted us to be able to give feedback to providers if, if we so chose. Um, so that is going to be on full board agendas and program and budget agendas moving forward. I just wanted to let you know why I decided to, to do that. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay, thanks, Phil. I think that's a great idea, so thank you. Anybody want have anything they wanna add? Okay, item number 10, hearing of the public. Is there anybody from the public that wishes to address this board? <laughs> right, tonight. <laughs> okay, going once, twice. Nope, I'm gonna close hearing of the public. I'm gonna take a motion to adjourn, but nobody's actually allowed to leave. We have to talk after. <laughs> motion by Megan, support by Lori, and we are adjourned. Thank you.